ah, 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 waft. Don't work with kids. Don't work with animals. Don't work with balloons. Don't work with balloons. What if Pixar made a horror film? That's the idea for Helium. I knew it needed to be some sort of inanimate object. Something like kid friendly or cute. I think it came down to like a stapler, but the smiley face already had a face on it. And everybody loves a smiley face balloon, so a balloon that kills people. It's got a rope, it can strangle them. Boom. Idea solved. So this, this film was testing. It was testing our new equipment. It was testing our ability to go out and find actors. They're testing our ability to get people to trust us in what we were trying to do. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy to hand a complete stranger a script about a balloon that kills people and to also tell them, hey, you're going to have to fight the balloon on a playground. And then have them trust you enough to come back and, and do two more films for you. Um. This beginning scene was the very last thing added to the edit. We, uh, we just thought, hey, what if we try putting the balloon up front? And if you watch it, it's kind of like him. His life flashing before his eyes. Because now here in the party, this is him coming to life. You know, air is literally breathed into him. He's inflated. Then we watch the whole movie. And then that, that first scene is where he gets shot and then deflated. So this whole thing is, is his life flashing before him. Um, and this party scene, I, I always wanted more people, more extras, but I just didn't know any. And they didn't come. Uh, I at one point toyed with like doing uh, maybe like silhouettes of people in front of the camera, but that didn't work. And then... These little kid balloons, they were supposed to look just like the adult balloons, but for some reason their smiley faces were on the top of them and it just it screwed up the whole composition and these balloons, they were always blowing and never staying in the right spot and I'm amazed we even got through the day. And this is funny, when we first did this fight scene, the paint on the back of the balloon when I hit him on the head, it like blew up. It was a pretty cool explosion, but the problem was the camera was too tight and you couldn't really see it. But, um, and I know the close-ups on the balloon during this fight, I believe I recorded it at my house. And that's why it's so dark, because I had one red light. And, you know, you, you learn how to do things, but then we just, we, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, and this, <laughs> when the balloon rose up, with the blood on him. I remember it was me, Sean, and Alan standing over the balloon, dripping blood on it, trying to raise it up with a with a piece of rope. And two children came into the coffee house looking <laughs> looking for the owner. So it was us three, a bloody balloon, and then just two random children off the street. I have no idea who they were or <laughs> what they needed at the coffee house that day, but they couldn't have come at a better time. Um, there was one scene cut. It was supposed to start with Officer Watson in his car asleep, and he had a big gulp. But for some reason, I don't. The audio, we either lost the audio or it wasn't recording, and so that that scene was cut. That's the only scene that was cut from the film. It was him asleep in his car. That's how it's supposed to start. Uh, and then he comes in, uh, looking, um, looking for the people. Um, and you know, I for what for what it is, I think it was a good job. I like the flashlight effects. This this one scene here with the balloon in the kitchen. I wish we could have redone that. You can't really tell what is going on, but um, I really like this shadow effect coming up when the balloon drops on the ground and you see the shadow. That was kind of playing off the old monster movies where the monster shadow kind of grows in the alleyway. Um, 
We also needed a, a proof to show the audience that the balloon is is moving. Um, and then you know, here's just here's just a plate of blood. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if that's. I think that's actual fake blood. It could be hot sauce. I don't remember. Um, and I don't remember who is laying on the ground here. If it's this, I don't remember if we did this in the same day or not. I can't remember. Um, and these photos, these photos from the from the party scene, you could hear them. The sound effects of them taking the photos, and this is this is the story beat that turns the 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 movie around because at first it starts off with the balloon being the monster just like in a, in a pixar movie like monsters inc you got the monsters and then halfway through the movie you realize that the monsters are the good guys and so it flips and so the balloon goes from being the monster that kills people then to being on the run running from the new monsters which are the humans and so these f photos of the balloons i like this shot how you know the alleyway and then the camera spins um but then it's followed by this is a good shot but the shot of the plants is is my least favorite i don't know what happened here the lens stabilization or something was messed up and, uh, also sound effects if you can't afford a large police squad or or army just layer in lots of sound effects and makes it sound like a lot of people are coming um, that's what we did with this police station that's the exterior of a police station but the inside here is at a church and we used one table and we just we filmed each scene so we'd film this whole side with that wall and then we would move the table and film the window then we would move the table and film the other wall because if if we were just to move the camera around we would have seen a whole bunch of uh, decorations that don't belong in a police station um, and this is the scene that's based off off of jaws and i don't know it works perfectly the jokes with the cartoon balloon the wind speed it's also that that scene from um u.s marshals where tommy lee jones is telling he waltz again and tells everybody all right this is what we do we need a perimeter here we need this we need that direction um i also find it funny that the, the police have hired just two random random hunters like why <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason why are there hunters trackers yeah. <laughs> uh, and then this, this always gets a laugh. The, the, the balloon. They paralyze you. Pull you into the silent abyss. Uh, it crushes your soul. I tried. I tried darkening the the scene, and then only light his eyes. But it, it just got too dark. But it's you know. Some of these jokes hit, some of them, some of them don't. But this this whole scene is just it's just great. Little backstory I tried to fill in. Maybe there was another attack in 1984. I don't know. That's when the balloons go crazy. They go crazy. That's good. That always gets a laugh. There was supposed to be another uh, policeman at this scene, and I remember. We were like an hour away from shooting it, and the actor couldn't make it. So then we had to. I just I was too busy setting up the scene with the lights and the equipment. And I gave the script to the actors. I'm like, you guys got to figure out how to remove one person from this scene, split up the lines, and figure it out. Um, and, and and they did a good job because there was supposed to be three policemen and two hunters. And so they, they figured it out last minute and worked just fine. And then the actor who couldn't make it, he comes back in and he does the voice of the dispatcher. So. And so now we've switched. The, the monster at the beginning of the movie is now on the run from the new monsters. And we are now rooting for the new, for the balloon. So we, we've done the Pixar flip. And I remember this. This day, it was raining, it was sunny. It was raining, it was sunny. And it was me, Sean, and Alan. We were sitting there waiting for the rain to stop. We were, were like, should we film? Should we, should we delay it? And everybody had to go do something. So this was like our last possible day to get this shot. And we said, let's just do it. 
So we wrapped the camera up, I think with a trash bag. I couldn't see the monitor. I had no idea if anything was in focus. And then like we, we finished this one section and then the bottom just dropped. And that's why there's this horrible B-roll shot of a rain cloud because it went from drizzle to just torrential downpour. And I'm amazed that this day we, we got, I'm amazed at what we got if you could see the behind the scenes because it was literally just me holding a camera wrapped in a trash bag I, I had no idea what was in frame what was in focus here's here's the rain cloud and it went from this bad part is this this bridge fight was supposed to be much more epic than it was and then the rain started washing away all the blood on the balloon so that kind of screwed that up and i just told alan here just just take the balloon fight with it and we'll, we'll do what we can and it, I, I think he actually fell there I don't know if he planned to do that or not uh, at one point I wanted the balloon to like flip around the bridge and come up behind him um, and here's the knife I had to get the knife on the other side of the bridge because the the balloon was supposed to sling it around his head like a like a lasso and slash him but there just it wasn't enough and I kept I kept telling Sean more blood more blood more blood you can always use more blood in a horror film always um, and then this little this little maneuver is kind of a happy accident I had the camera on a slider on a tripod on a hill and it wasn't quite uh, tight enough so the camera started to slip and so you get this weird little angle it's not quite a Dutch angle but it's not straight on either so it's 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 halfway between a, a, a lined up shot and a Dutch angle and it's very just kind of unsettling the way it slides and, and, and tilts it's so uh, I you know it's a happy a happy little accident is what it is. and this voice here is the police officer who couldn't make it to the other scene so I called him up said hey just record these lines send them to me Voila. And then this scene, we recorded it super early, and there was a dog barking through the whole thing. And we were waiting for the dog to stop barking. And every time it stopped, we were ready to roll. He started barking again, and it took forever. And then again, the balloon wouldn't do what we were doing, so I, I don't know if you can see the fishing line attached to it. But luckily for this part, it was slightly deflated, so it was easier to control, but... I, I think the makeup job really sells. It just is beat up and hopeless, and it wants to go. It's lost its family. It just wants. It just wants to go. And then here Watson is, trying to reason. Watson's being a sensible cop, trying to reason with the criminal, saying, "Hey, come on in. We can hear your side of the story. We can work this out." Then, boom. The hunter. If you listen closely, if you listen closely, you can hear the air leaking out of the balloon. I, I added that and laughed for about two minutes. Um, I don't know. The, the hunter kind of represents the just stubbornness of society. You know, the cops trying to do the right thing and, and listen, bring it in. And, and then this song, I, I wanted the 99 Red Balloons, but I think it was like $5,000 to license it. So I got a, a local musician to make me a, a rip-off tune. So, it's, you know, it's a fun little film. And hey, we won three more awards. So that's, that's three more awards. We got third place, audience award, and best screenplay. So now... 17 years later from the first film, we got three more balloons. Um, so there you go. You know, hey, I've always wanted to revisit Helium. Uh, there, There is a larger story to tell. Maybe one day. Who knows?